Welcome to Drawing Post Rhino Videos. In this project, we'll be creating the bale for the pendant we created in the first part of this project, the bezel setting. To create the bale, we'll be manipulating control points, utilizing the gumball, and working with the loft command. Let's check out the final version of the project we'll be creating. Before we begin, you should be familiar with the following key learning points. With the following prerequisite knowledge, viewport manipulation, layers, viewport manipulation, layers, basic shape creation, ortho, and O snaps. Our key learning points for this project will include manipulating control points, gumball manipulation, offset, loft, cap, and boolean commands. Let's begin by opening up the project we created in the first part, bezel setting. We'll start by creating two layers for the bale. Right-click on the Layers panel and select the Create New Layers option. We'll name our first layer Bale Cons Lines. Do that again and name the second layer Bale. We'll change the color of the Bale Cons Lines layer to a bright green for easier visibility. Click on the layer color icon and change the color. We'll change the color of the bale layer to a nice turquoise to match the bezel setting. I'll just use the color picker here, move to the bezel setting layer icon and click to select that color. Now let's go ahead and create an ellipse to form the shape of the bale. Ensure that the bale cons lines layer is current. Go to right view. Input the ellipse command. And for the ellipse center, ensure that you're one grid square above the X axis and at least five or six grid squares away from the pendant on the left. When ready, click on the construction plane. And for the end of first axis prompt, input four. Press enter, and holding down shift to engage ortho, drag your cursor straight to the right and click on the construction plane. For the end of second access prompt, input 2.5. Press enter, and drag your cursor straight down on the construction plane and click to finish the shape. We now have an ellipse ready to be modified. We'll use control points to better form the shape for the bale. We don't want the bottom of the bale to project below the bottom of the pendant, because otherwise it will not sit flat on the chest. So, select the ellipse we just created and input the points on command. You should now have a bounding box and control points appear around the ellipse. Let's use the gumball to manipulate the control points. Turn on the gumball widget, and we'll start by lengthening the left half of the shape. Window select the three control points on the left end of the ellipse. When they're selected and highlighted in yellow, click on the red arrow of the gumball to move in the x-axis direction. Click on it. At the distance to move in x-direction prompt, input negative 2 to move to the left. We've elongated the ellipse on the left side. Now let's move up the bottom curve of the ellipse so it doesn't project lower than the pendant. Window select the three bottom control points. Now click on the green arrow to move in the y-axis direction. At the distance to move in the y-direction prompt, input 0.75. Press enter, and we can see now that the bottom of the ellipse has moved up 3 fourths of a millimeter. Now let's use a reference line to be used for the interior surface of the bale. We'll press escape to turn off control points, and ensure that quadrant O-snap is the only O-snap turned on for the time being. So just deselect any others that might be on. Input the line command. Input the line command. At the start of line prompt, snap to the left quad point of the ellipse. At the end of line prompt, input 1, press enter, and holding down shift to engage ortho, draw the cursor straight to the right on the construction plane, clicking to complete the line. Now, let's copy the ellipse. Select the modified ellipse and input the copy command. Choose the In Place option, and you'll now have a direct copy of your lips exactly where the first one is located. 
Now let's scale it down. Ensure that end OSNAP is turned on. And keeping the copy still selected, click and drag on the red scale handle of the gumball to move in the X axis direction. Hold down shift to force a 3D constraint and draw the copied shape in until you hit the end OSNAP of the line we just created. Just like so, and let go when done. We now have a smaller ellipse within the larger one. We can go ahead and delete that reference line now. Now let's go ahead and offset the shapes we created to make two copies that will form the outer edges of the bale. Go to Perspective View. And let's make sure that the two modified ellipses we created are more centered in our field of view, so we'll zoom and pan as needed. Select the outer ellipse. Input the offset command. Ensure the both sides option is selected. And set the distance to 2. At the side to offset prompt, snap to one of the quad points of the ellipse. You can now see we've made two copies. Let's go ahead and do the same for the interior ellipse. Select it. Press enter to re-engage the offset command. Keeping the distance set to 2, select the both sides option. Snap to a quad point. And we now have two copies of each of our shapes. Let's go ahead and delete or hide the interior shape. Let's rotate the ellipses to give a nicer shape to the bale. We'll begin by selecting the ellipses on the left. When the gumball appears, click on the blue curve to rotate in the z-axis direction. For the angle to rotate around the z-axis prompt, input 15 and press enter. You can now see how the bottom of the two ellipses have rotated towards the interior of the pendant. Let's go ahead and do the same for the other side. Select them both. Click on the blue curve to rotate in the z-axis direction. And for this angle, we'll input negative 15. Press enter. And the ellipses will now be angled towards the center of the pendant. We'll create the surfaces now of the bale using the loft command. Ensure that the bale layer is current and select the two larger shapes. Input the loft command, and at the drag seam point to adjust, ensure your seam points are aligned as shown. If they're not, for example, I'll move one and show you what happens. If I press enter and make my surface, you can see that I have a kinked surface and I want something smooth. So I'm going to undo that. Press enter to re-engage the loft command. Keep my seam points aligned, press enter, and now click on loft to create my surface. Let's go ahead now and do the same for the interior shapes. I'll ensure that the bail cons lines layer is current as we're going to be using these shapes as a cutter. Let's pan a bit so we have both shapes in our field of view and select the two interior shapes. Press enter to re-engage the loft command. Keep the seam points aligned, press enter and click on loft to create the surface. Now we'll go ahead and extend the bounds of the interior surface beyond the bounds of the exterior one. Click on the surface you just created in green. Using the red handle to drag in the X axis direction, widen the surface. Let's go ahead now and cap off these two surfaces. Select both surfaces. Input the cap command. And we now created two closed poly surfaces. Let's cut the interior surface out of the exterior one to form the bale. Select the exterior surface, input the Boolean difference command, and at the select surfaces or poly surfaces to subtract with prompt, ensure that delete input is selected and click on the green surface. Press enter, and you can now see the bale is almost formed. Let's go ahead and round off the edges first. I'll zoom in on the bale a bit more. I'll input the fillet edges command, and ensure that the next radius is set to something small, like 0.08. If it's too large, the command will fail. You can play around with this a little bit. At the Select Edges to Fillet prompt, select the exterior edges of the poly surface, as well as the two interior edges. Press Enter, and Enter again to accept the defaults, and we've rounded off the surface. We're almost done. Before we combine the bale and the pendant, let's adjust it a little bit. Go to Right View, and click on the bill, and using the gumball widget, click on the red handle to drag in the x-axis direction until the bill projects into the pendant.
Something like that should be good. You can also drag down on the y-axis depending on how you prefer the placement, ensuring the bottom of the bill does not project below the bottom of the pendant. That should be good there. Let's go check the placement in perspective view. I'll go ahead and ensure that the bezel setting layer is current and turn off visibility to the bail cons lines. That looks pretty good. Maybe I'll rotate up a little bit on the z-axis direction. I'll click on the bail and drag on the blue curve to rotate in that direction. Just a tiny bit like that. Checking in right view to make sure I'm still not projecting below the pendant. Uh, no, that's not going to work, so I'll adjust it up a bit. Looks perfect there. I'll return to perspective view and combine the pendant and the bail. I'll select the pendant, select the bail, and input the Boolean union command. The pendant is now complete. I think though that these are actually located right now on the bail layer, so let's move it. I'll select my combined shape, right click on the bezel setting layer, and select the move objects to this layer prompt. Now, I'll right click and view this in rendered view mode. And our cabochon bezel setting pendant is complete. You can experiment with different placements of the pendant, for example, rotating it so it's more portrait instead of landscape, or adding designs. Happy designing!